Hi guys, it's Sandy Sweet, and I'm back with another YouTube video. So in case you haven't noticed, if, if this shirt looks familiar, it's because I was doing, I am doing a batch content creation. So if you're watching, still watching, I appreciate you. Please, by all means, click that like, subscribe, share with your friends this particular a vlog is kind of uh, personal um i'll be sharing a whole lot more which is why i'm like sitting down here laid back kind of feel um and yeah just you know check it out with me <laughs> so um i titled this particular vlog pretty much things i wish i would have been prepared for i am the oldest in my family. I'm one of those people, I love to prepare. I love to be prepared. I hate being blindsided. I hate things just happening to me. I'm one of those people like I really like to know what's happening and what's, what is going to happen so that I can prepare. And even if I can't prepare for it like physically by making a list of things to do, I can prepare for it mentally. And so, cause if I can get my mind into it or prepare, like if I can expect it and brace myself, then I feel as though um, it won't hurt as bad, especially if it's something bad that's happening. It's really a defense mechanism. I, I honestly believe that it is truly a defense mechanism so that I don't end up um, being blindsided and feeling hurt because nobody wants to get hurt. It's it's Nobody likes the, the feeling of pain or hurt or rejection. So for me, these are the things I wish that I could have prepared for because it's one of those things that like, no matter how much you prepare for it or how much you think or you're warned about it, you can't really prepare for, um, but man, I wish there was something like that I could have done to prepare for it. So one of them being, um, postpartum. And I mean like the after, after giving birth. Now I've given birth three times, three healthy, beautiful baby girls. And um, pregnancy, because my pregnancies are usually the same, it's like clockwork where I'm like, oh, okay, I know what to expect. But the postpartum, the aftermath, I find was very different for all three of them. Very, very different. I don't think I could have prepared for it. And it's not because I wasn't aware of the possibility of any of these things happening. It's just because no matter what happens, <clears throat> no matter what happens, it's going to be different. So for example, with my firstborn, I had such a ridiculously high expectation of myself that I literally drove myself crazy. And I can't even say it. Like my husband's amazing. Honestly, a rock star does the best that he can to be there for me as much as he possibly can. Um, but with my first one, my goodness, like I had these expectations. I grew up um, in a very strict, conservative, very, very strict Christian home um, where, you know, I was taught, you know, that you, you had to have a strict prayer life. And I remember this one specifically standing out to me. And this is not like a knock or to diss anybody who does that. By all means, yo, if you, you're a prayer warrior, you got a strict prayer, prayer life, props to you, bro. Like, but for me, I remember um, when my first one with my firstborn, I, it was the first time in a long time that I hadn't worked. I was on mat leave and my daughter would wake up every two hours, clockwork, clockwork would wake up every two hours and I wasn't getting much sleep. And I remember crying one day because there wasn't milk. There was no milk left and I couldn't have cereal something as simple like that so I, I was not sleeping I was a walking zombie and I was pursuing music at the same time and I was thinking of starting into social media and so and I'm a type of person that like to stay busy and so I had this expectation that I would become this working mom you know I would even though I was on mat leave I would I was gonna invest take the time for me I was for some reason I thought like I'm on mat leave with my firstborn, I'm gonna have time to pursue other things. Um, wrong, absolutely, absolutely wrong. Uh, I had no time, I was so tired, I was exhausted, like completely exhausted, a walking zombie. And I remember feeling like a failure because I was, I, I, 
I was keeping this little tiny human alive um, that I was learning. We were learning about one another, you know, the baby, of course. Um, meanwhile, I was down on myself feeling like I'm not praying. I should be praying. I should be up at five o'clock in the morning because I have time. I should be up. Um, I should be able to fast more and, and pray more, even though I'm like breastfeeding. Looking back, these expectations, I, I now realize, were uh, ridiculous. Absolutely. <laughs> Looking back, I'm like, wow, that was dumb. Um, but yeah, no. Uh, and that was the thing for me that made me feel like a failure as a Christian, as, as a mom, and as, uh, as a wife. Like I wasn't covering my family in prayer and I was filling them spiritually because I wasn't praying. I wasn't, I wasn't able to physically get up at five o'clock in the morning and pray. Listen, bruh, like that postpartum, that postpartum session, I can't even say like depression because for like, well, I think with my third one, I would say, uh, like, I'm, how can I say this? With my first one, I had expectations that made no sense. I thought I was gonna become this overnight superhero because I could be mom and I could be, you know, Wonder Woman. And being a mom and a wife, being human, <laughs> listen, if you're a human being, if you're able to function as a human being after you've given birth is is a hero, heroic skill on its own. But I had these expectations, especially the one with, with praying. And I remember just feeling down and it was, it was my uh, baby's godfather who was like, listen, like, can't, can't God hear you? Can't you pray while cooking? Like if, if you pray while cooking, is God not gonna hear you? And snap, that snapped me back to reality. He was like, what, you, you're gonna go to hell because you're not able to wake up at five o'clock in the morning? And it literally, when he put that in perspective, it made me realize that I, I had to let go. I literally had to let go of these expectations that I was not, I, I could not physically do it. And it wasn't going to happen. It just wasn't for me. So that was that with my first one. My second one, the postpartum, I had to deal with the traumatic birth experience that I had where I was in a completely different city. My baby came early. So I was, I was visiting um, family and working on some stuff. Um, and my baby came early. I was rushed to a hospital with doctors. I didn't know with doctors and nurses that I... I honestly did not treat me well okay and i can't even say oh it was because i was black i can't even say that because the doctors there were all um people of color and and, and minorities so that was that that was a big letdown i expected you know to be treated like a human being and then these people i felt like they treated me like some second class citizen so that was a shock to me and also the feeling of I let my baby down, my second born, because we were in this new town and so we didn't have anything and I wasn't prepared to have her. And I, I felt like a failure as a mom because I failed to prepare for her for her um, reception. As And I, I really felt bad that I gave, I, I just, I just wasn't prepared. I really wasn't prepared. Um, and again, it's just because I, I, I did not expect her to come so early. Also, the fact that she had that spinal tap, uh, she needed to have a spinal tap and, and you know, um, my water had broke and I didn't know that my water had broken. And for 12 hours, I was leaking amniotic fluid. And so when she was born, there were all these things they had to put on antibiotics and they had to monitor her and they kept poking and prodding her for a whole week. and. Not being able to, it was just a hot mess. Uh, just the the whole feeling of the whole feeling of I didn't do enough as her mother messed me up completely, completely, completely messed me up. And it took me a while to actually uh, forgive myself, even though you know I was told, "Hey, it wasn't your fault. You did nothing wrong. This these things happen." But I it really did mess me up, and it it shook me to my core that I failed my second born by not being prepared. And so that's what I'm talking about when I say like the postpartum, that postpartum, nobody, I don't think there's anything that can, um, 
I don't think there's anything that could have happened where I would have been able to prepare myself for that, except maybe for the second one, I it probably would have been like, oh, well, stay home, um, don't go nowhere. And if you see water coming out of your um, little hole down there, if, if you see water coming down, trickling down, you know, it, it's not like the movies, go check it out. You can never be too safe. Um, and I think with my third one, postpartum, I would say I wish I would have been prepared or properly prepared for uh, the the hormonal change, the postpartum, um, postpartum depression, I would say. Uh, that's been the toughest to deal with is the up and down the constant uh mood swings the easily irritable always tired the the brain fog the words not coming out the way you want them to but i would say the uh the hormonal change has been the toughest to deal with um simply because there is no quick fix for it uh, I, w I wish I could be like, oh, well, it's because the baby's not sleeping. This, my third one is sleeping through the night. I've had no issues with the sleeping. So, yeah, I would say the, uh, like, my baby's sleeping through the, the night. Um, there's been a lot happening. Maybe that's what it is. I, I really don't think there's a reason, like, there is a source for postpartum depression other than the fact of I literally had a baby about two months ago. And like two and a half months ago and my hormones are still kind of out of whack but let's be honest um and just because my uterus has been deemed fine really doesn't mean that uh and just because you know i'm physically okay doesn't mean that like i'm okay and being okay and understanding that it doesn't make me a bad mother and it doesn't make me a bad person. Like, and just like understanding that I'm not a failure. Like I didn't fail at life just because I'm not feeling it today. Like I didn't, it, it's like, it's okay not to be okay kind of thing. Like it, I don't like it. I don't think it's okay. <laughs> like, let's, get, let's get it straight. Like it's not, for me, it's not okay. I don't like feeling this way. I don't like not feeling myself. Um, I don't like, you know, the fact that I wake up some days and, and I just, I'm just over it. I don't like the fact that, you know, our mommy can't be her best self when my best self for that day is just getting through the day and going through the motions and maybe, you know, the smile and the, the, ha <laughs> isn't there. Um, that part really does suck. And I wish there was a way to prepare for those days where I'm, I'm not able to give the best of myself, the most positive self, the best of my positivity. I don't know if that makes any sense, but to provide that to my girls and my husband, like I shouldn't be so triggered. And it, that, to me, that's how I view it. I sh it it's, not, it's not that deep. Like why, why is, you know, a squeal of laughter. So, ah, to me, it, it's not that deep, Sandy. Like, they're kids, they're just having fun. You know, they're excited, they're passionate. Yeah, you know, that, and I think that's one of the things that we need to destigmatize, like, that we gotta talk about it. Like, there is no preparation for that. Um, there is no real rep preparation. You just need to have a good support system and take advantage of your support system of your village. But to think and, and to think that you can overcome these things by yourself. I mean, I don't, no woman should be on her own postpartum after giving birth. I, I believe we, there should be a support and I'm not saying because like, oh, she's a danger to herself or to society. No, because she really needs help. I, we, we need each other. We need help. We need to be able to sign off for the good of ourselves. So just, just so that we can feel a little more human and, and get to that place where we can feel a little more human.
because there is no real prep work. It, this is not like some test. There is no pass or fail. You, I'm not gonna get a cookie or a, a bachelor's degree in dealing with stress. Nobody, nobody gets that. There is no real reward, let's be honest. You don't get a cookie because, hey, you handled postpartum like a G, like a champ. You did that. No, there is none of that, unfortunately. There is no incentive. <laughs> other than like some people going around saying oh really i had nothing everything was so great i would totally have kids but that's good for you i'm glad that was your experience unfortunately that was not my experience um unfortunately postpartum is something that i really wish i could have i could prepare for for all of it um but um, that is not the case um but hopefully uh hopefully you know, our girls, like my girls, when they do give birth, I will be able to be there for them. And that will be their preparation where I can just be like, you're not, you're, you're probably not going to ask me for help. So I'm just going to go ahead and help you. And just before you ask, I'm going to be there to get the girls out of your hair, you know, or here's some food. It's already cooked. Put it in the freezer, unfreeze it when you're ready to have some. Really though? Really though? Really? Really? We just, we just don't talk. Yeah. I mean, it's worth it. Honestly, I've done it three times. Clearly, it's worth it. I ain't learned my lesson. <laughs> but yeah. So, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, when I get a little real, a little rough, a little raw. I love motherhood. I love being a mom. I absolutely love motherhood. I remember when I gave birth to my daughter, the first thing that popped into my head was like, this is what you were here for. This is who you were meant to meet. This is the person that's gonna change your life. And she did, absolutely, she absolutely did. Um, doesn't make the rough back, doesn't make the ride back to me any less um, unpleasant. <laughs> that's a double, I think that's a double negative. Um, but that is the truth. So to all of you out there who are riding out this postpartum wave, stick it out it does get better i know it gets better it, it gets better it's just the waiting till it, it's like it's like being on a road trip and it's bumpy and you're just like are we there yet are we there yet you know you can't stop you know you can't stop the ride you know you probably could get some better shock system or a better car but hey whatever i mean not everyone can afford a range rover or land rover um but while you're on the journey you know that eventually you're going to reach that destination. And so ride it out till the waves come down and the bumps are smoothed out. It gets better. And on the days that it, it gets really bad, please reach out for help by all means. I've done it. I've done it. Okay. There is no shame in calling and saying, hey, I need help. Not one. So please reach out for help. Get the help you need. And, uh. Let's do this thing together. Thank you for joining me today. Um, click like, subscribe, comment below. If you have, share your story. Let's share our stories. Um, we need each other. And so share your stories down below. And I will see you guys in the next video. Ciao for now.